I'm flying out of JFK Airport in New York, back to Bangkok tomorrow morning. I have an 11 a.m. flight. Now, I was staying at uh, a relative's home uh, about a 90-minute drive from JFK with my rental car. And in order for me to make my 11 o'clock flight with enough wiggle room for any problems that might exist in getting on international flights these days, I would have had to get up before dawn and brave the rush hour traffic of New York City. So I decided to give myself a treat. In 1962, shortly after Idlewild Airport became John F. Kennedy International Airport, TWA Trans World Airlines built one of the most modern futuristic airline terminals in the world. It opened in 1962. And it was, you know, quite a thing. I mean, it was really a futuristic, almost like something that you would see in a theme park or a Disney World or an Epcot Center or something like that. And I remember, I was a young boy when it opened up, and we lived not far from the airport. And I remember taking a ride out there. My father was really interested in it. And we took a ride out and toured the terminal. And it was, it was like going into a futuristic museum. Well, in 2002, TWA went out of business. They reopened the TWA terminal as a hotel. And it's a theme hotel. It's called the TWA Hotel here at Kennedy Airport, the JFK Airport. And it's all themed up for the 60s. Now, when I came into the lobby and I checked in, I was a little bit disappointed. Upon entering the hotel, nobody greeted us. Nobody opened a door. And it was a rather ordinary kind of check-in place. But then I realized what it is, it's made to look like the check-in counter of an airport. The guy who took care of me was friendly and efficient. I don't know, I guess when I lay out 400 bucks for a hotel room, I'm expecting to have my butt kissed a little bit, I suppose. But once I got over that, I began to realize this is a theme. It's a, you know, it's a theme, it's a look. And uh, stepping in here it was interesting because I'm remembering stuff from when I was here, you know, 55, 60 years ago, a really long time ago when I was when I was a young lad. And here they have a, uh, what was then a very futuristic uh, board with flights on it. I think it's uh, actually showing up-to-date flights. But what I remembered about this place was the atrium here. And that clock, I don't know, the things that stick in your mind. Right, the, the dome-shaped center of the building looked almost like a flying saucer from the outside. That might have been a purposeful look. And here, this very well-done, rather um, comfortable-looking lounge area. There is food courts and a bar. Food court is down that way. You can get all kinds of uh, New York stuff. Let's uh, take a look around this place. So up here on this wing, there's a museum offering the flight attendants wear of 1960s TWA, designed by Ole Cassini. It's bringing me back to the days of long time ago. I was a young teenager, and this would have been a pretty fancy place. When I first walked down it after checking in, Frank Sinatra was, uh, was singing. Very 60s kind of stuff. But yeah, this is kind of cool. I'm liking this. So yes, imagine in 1962 walking down that hallway to this end, and you would have went down those stairs and walked out to your plane and gone up one of those stairways that they roll up to meet the doorway of the plane. So walking through this hallway would have been quite the experience for flyers back in the day. It's actually quite the experience now. It has a very compelling visual effect as you walk through it. I hope the camera's picking it up. 
this is kind of nice, a recreation of a 1960s living room. So yeah, this is the 60s for sure. I had a couch like that once. Remember these young people, I don't have many watching the channel, but you young people, we used to have to dial phone numbers. Oh, the dial thing ain't working, but you can pick that up. This is what used to be a telephone. It was connected to the wall and you used to have to dial the numbers instead of pushing. How's that for antiqueness? And look at that. That didn't have a remote. We were impoverished. We had to get up and change the channel. Although we only had about seven or eight selections instead of the thousands that are available now. These things have survived. I still see these kinds of lights all over the place. Yeah. 1960s, here we are. Look at the old Polaroid. Talking about a technological dinosaur. This is a cool old Polaroid. This is the Lockheed Constellation that was the passenger, passenger airplane of its day from the mid 50s to the early 60s. But Boeing introduced its uh, jet aircraft early in the 60s and made these babies obsolete. Also made the terminal obsolete. You can imagine put that much effort into a terminal like this only to find it kind of out of business by the time you opened it up. Yeah, Star of America. Also, in addition to being uh, the premier passenger aircraft of its day, Air Force One was one of these Lockheed constellations as well, the presidential aircraft. This is nicely restored. So yeah, here's a good look at the terminal and the layout from the back. So there's the terminal. You would have walked out one of these tubes to get your plane. Now it puts you in, into the hotel. Midway through the tube, they've constructed the hotel and the rooms. That's one side. I'm on this side. There's my room, um, my hotel complex with my room in it, connected by that tube underneath the aircraft. Let's go up and take a look inside old Connie's. So yeah, let's see what the plane looks like inside. Yeah, I don't think it looked like this when they were flying passengers. Well, you never know, it may have. Ah, oh, you have a navigator's chair. That's a thing you don't see much anymore. Radio operator over here. Pilot, go pilot. The windows are smaller than I would have anticipated. Yeah, shot from the back. Actually, in second look, these chairs are actually bigger than modern day coach class. Some of the windows, nice big windows. I kind of like the towel fins as well. There's a elegant look to them. What it used to be like flying back in the day. Not that much different. They fly higher and faster, but I think these things had an elegance of their own. I've flown on large multi-engine aircraft. My experience of them is they're very smooth in the way they negotiate the air, the airwaves, the clouds. Yeah, this is kind of cool. I'm glad I came here. Got myself a video. Look around an old TWA museum in a uh, rather impressive hotel. My attitude has changed dramatically since my entry through the front door. I'd been traveling, I, I was probably just in a crappy mood and looking for something to project that crappy feeling on. I'm feeling a lot better now, so. Uh, and tomorrow in the morning when the sun comes up, I'll take a few shots of the, of the terminal from, uh, from the outside as I leave to board my flight back to Bangkok. And I hope that uh, YouTube doesn't, you know, the YouTube uh, uh, copyright censors don't send out a hit squad for all the 1960s music I have up on this video. We'll see. I'll give it a try. Thanks for watching.